2023 Money Show Orlando was a resounding success. More than 1,000 attendees and 90 plus speakers descended on the Omni Hotel for three days of education and entertainment. Not only that, but Charles Payne broadcast his hit Fox Business TV show live from the exhibit hall floor and signed hundreds of copies of his new book for attendees. This is my first time at the Money Show, and I'm so excited to be here. I'm learning so much today. I've been a huge, uh, huge fan of Mr. Payne and the way he invests. Uh, I love watching Fox Business. I'm a real big fan of learning as many different methods as I can, um, and I'm a real big fan, big fan. I'm really excited to read this book. I'm so excited to have a signed copy instead of just a regular copy. Also joining us were John and Pete Nigerian, co-founders of Market Rebellion. Their keynote address, titled, Will the Fed Drive Us Into Recession? at the full attention of a packed hall. Options are not for holding forever. They are for trading. Again, and you don't have to be a day trader, though. Um, for me, a long time is two weeks. But for a lot of you, you might want to be in the one month to three month range. That's still great for options, but you've got to take profits when you have them. Because again, our discipline, Pete's and mine, is that when we have 100% return on an option, which you almost never get that with a stock, but with an option, you get them all the time. You bought something at 50 cents, it goes to a buck, you made 100%. Um, I take off half at that point. And then if the direction is working, I'll roll either up with calls or down with puts, because that's what works for us. Plus, they signed copies of their brand new book, It's Not an Option. I followed uh, Pete and John for many years, and as a matter of fact, uh, John spent some time with me in Las Vegas and turned me into a full-time trader. So I retired from my job, and now I trade uh, index options full-time. We've been following Pete and John for quite so many years. Not only that we've learned how to trade with him, but we've learned what they are all about, and it's more about being human and giving back, and that's what we're, we're focused on. I want you guys to put on lipstick because I want you to kiss the book. That's what I want. I'm going to take it out of the picture and post it. <laughs> I had the chance to sit down with the Nigerians on the sidelines of the conference for this week's episode. I asked John and Pete what they were seeing in the markets, and now it's time for you to hear what they had to say. I think uh, that the Fed is going to drive the market into a recession, unfortunately, Mike. I don't think it'll be a deep one or a lasting one, so I guess I share that with Stevie Cohen, yeah. um, who I cited in my slides as saying he also believes that we're going to see a recession, but it'll be an opportunity rather than a scary thing. That's the theme, uh, Mr. Well, I she do is now that out here, get away. Anyway, and quite honestly, and John and I talk about this all the time. Just last year, we we went through what I thought was a recession already, and nobody wanted to call it that. A non-recession recession. Yeah, yeah. Right, exactly right. <laughs> yeah, it met every criteria for recession. Don't yeah, right. yeah, yeah. Exactly. yeah, our word out of it. But I, I think you know it would be a lot different. We talk about it all the time, but I mean a depression is is something really awful yes. <laughs> we're not looking at that no. we're just looking at a recession and it doesn't mean it's something that we just want to zip right past uh mentally but i think it's something that we don't have to be as overly concerned as sometimes people get okay you know we obviously had a great first half of the year and then the last few months have been you know rough let's be honest what do you see happening with the rest of 2023 i mean do you buy that seasonality and earnings and so on are going to get us uh, you know back on track no no, no. <laughs> yeah, i don't <laughs> <laughs> and here's why mike I think that uh, uh, investors very quickly will look past even great earnings from companies like Netflix um, and so-so earnings from Disney and a host of others. I know those are both media plays, but um, I, I believe there'll be a lot of tax loss selling in the likes of Disney um, because Disney, you know, was, the stock was 160, 170. Yeah. It's half of that now. And so would it be natural to assume that maybe after Thanksgiving, first week in December, people are taking those losses so they can recognize it, match that yeah. loss up against a gain somewhere else, and then start over in 2024. That pressure from tax loss selling, I think, is what brings us to new lows. Got it. And you know, you were talking in your presentation about how you know, what you're seeing in the options market looks pretty bearish as well, right? Yeah, we are seeing. We're seeing an immense number of puts being bought on a consistent basis almost every single day in certain areas, whether it's ETFs or individual names. Uh, but I'd also mention if you're looking for anything bullish, I'd be bullish on volatility, <laughs> which, is, which is not always a good thing. But 
I just think that we are in a, a space now globally um, and geopolitically that it's turning into something that, you know, I, I think if you look at energy, I still, like John had talked about today, the possibility of at any moment popping back up over 100 potentially for crude, I don't think that's so far-fetched. Yeah. So you've got energy, you've got volatility, and we talk about the option markets all the time, and, and I can tell you this, the volumes are off the charts. Yeah. Uh, in the last couple of weeks, we've done 50 million on multiple days, and year-to-date, we're about 45 million contracts. So there's there's a lot going on in that specific part of the markets. Let's shift gears a little bit. I mean, interest rates have been the big you know problem for the market for a while. And I know you guys are great fans of our, our economic policies that we're pursuing right now. So, uh, you know, what do you think is going to be happening with this debt situation? Um, I, we can certainly kick the can down the road. That's what they'll do yes. because there's no penalties on them, Mike, for doing it. Um, again, as Warren Buffett said, if you told every member of Congress, if you don't balance the budget, you can't run for re-election. They would balance the budget. On the other hand, the United States' biggest economy in the world by a bunch, especially just as one unit, um, rather than you know, 23, 26 diverse countries in Europe and so forth, um, I think that we can handle it. We're not happy about it. I'm sure you're not happy that this is debt that your kids are going to have to pay because we're not paying it. We're not even hardly paying the interest that covers it right now. So I don't know who the people are that keep buying it other than the Fed <laughs> when they're buying it uh, because Japan and China have rather uh, reduced. They're still buying, but they're not buying as much as they used to. And I think that's a little bit scary. You guys are here to talk about your new book in part. It's not an option, right? This is the fifth book you guys have written. Yep. Talk a little bit about what's in that book. What are people going to learn when they you know, get a chance to get it off the store shelf soon? Well, this gives them an opportunity to see it from the ground up. And they, they get the opportunity to see something. Sometimes some of our books have been a little bit probably more um, difficult for people to get through. But, uh, you know, just because of the fact that even though we try to make it as simple as possible, um, that's not always easy. But I think in this book, it gives the beginners, the advanced, the middle, everybody an opportunity to figure out how to manipulate themselves and, and move around within the markets that we're in today. Okay. And, you know, one other point you made recently was just the, the volumes, the amount of people, that, you know, trading volume, people getting into the market that have never been involved in options before. What are you seeing, you know, firsthand with Market Rebellion? People definitely, Mike, want to um, corral their risk as best they can. They know that they're not going to beat the market. They're not going to um, really fund their retirement accounts as well as they could if they're not in the market. But it scares them because they always worry, well, if I'm the last guy in, I'm going to get killed on the way down. So defining your risk by buying an option means that even on the bad trades, you're losing a defined amount, a small amount. Um, and that means that since none of us have perfect timing, they can find a time uh, as long as they steadily go in and just buy with that limited risk. Eventually, they're going to hit some really big winners. Yeah. That's the leverage that you get from options. So it's defining your risk and getting leverage that really pay off. And I'd also add to that, Mike, just John and I talk about it every single day, but discipline. The discipline when you are in something like that where you can use the leverage and it's there and sometimes it gives you the advantage for sure. Uh, but you have to take advantage of that. You have to take advantage of the situation and by having disciplines that you've got, when you're going to exit, when you're going to do this, when you're going to do that, um, all of that is very important because this is not an easy thing to trade, uh, but there are ways to do it that you can make it a little bit easier. Yeah, I mean, that's, and that kind of is where I was going to wrap up. I mean, you guys have been doing this for years. You've seen the options market evolve. I mean, what are your top tips maybe that you tell people now versus what you might have said, I don't know, 15, 20 years ago? <laughs> I'd say that uh, you've got... Uh, an extreme liquidity um, benefit right now going on for the newest people coming in. I mean, if when I was trading for the first decade, we were never over a million contracts a day. Now, like Pete said, we're up over 50. We hit a record 70 million on a really busy day this year. So that gives you an idea that there's plenty of liquidity, which means that you can get in and out without too much friction. Yeah. Um, the worst thing that can happen is you get into a position and you have a hard time getting out. Um, with this much liquidity, that's not the problem you're going to face. Well, guys, really, I appreciate your time here. Best of luck with the new book, and thanks for uh, coming here and sharing your wisdom with the Money Show attendees. Thanks, Mike. Thanks, Cheers. Mike.